say a few words. Someone whose books I've seen on my son's bookshelves ever since. She's written over 60 books, including the Noughts and Crosses series, Hacker, whoa, exactly. Hacker, Boys Don't Cry, and her latest no novel, Noble Conflict. She's won a whole series of awards. She's a graduate of the National Film and Television School. She scripted Pick Heart Boy, which was shortlisted for a Carnegie Medal. And in 2005, she was honored with the Eleanor Fargen Award for recognition of her distinguished contribution to the worlds of children's books. In 2008, she was honored with an OBE for her service to children's literature. And in June, she was appointed the first children's laureate. I give you Mallory Blackman, OBE. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, actually, I was the eighth children's laureate, not the first, but, but who's counting? Who's counting? What are seven between friends? Hi, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here for this year's LSBC Academic Achievement Awards. These awards highlight and celebrate in the very best way possible just what is achievable because sometimes, so, sometimes because of our schools, our teachers, our friends and family, but sometimes, in spite of our schools, our teachers, our friends and family. When I was a child, my dad drummed it into me that as a black woman, I'd have to work twice as hard to get half as far. For him, the key to any kind of achievement was education, education, education. Now, my dad got a lot of things wrong, but he got that one absolutely right. My dad had no use for fiction, for example. He wanted me to read non-fiction, to learn facts. His argument was that stories weren't real, they weren't true, and I needed to live in, the, live in the real world. But as far as he was concerned, I would never learn anything from fiction. But my dad was wrong about my reading. Not only did reading fiction directly feed my love of reading non-fiction, and I do love facts, but reading fiction taught me so much about people, about our similarities and our differences, Reading fiction taught me empathy. I, be, I became able to see through the eyes of others, which doesn't mean I have to agree with the point of view of others, but at least I can see their point of view. And most important of all, reading fiction inspired me to want to write it. But as a child, I had a different career path in mind. From the time I was seven or eight, I wanted to be an English teacher. A love of stories and poems made me want to stay in the world of literature and pass on my love of English to others. When I was 17 and doing my A-levels, my careers teacher, who was also the one who had to write our school year's Ucker references, uh, they're called UCAS now, but it was Ucker in my day, um, asked me what I wanted to do when I left school. I had it all worked out. I wanted to go to Goldsmiths College, I told her, and get my English and drama degree, and then I wanted to be an English teacher. She looked me in the eye and said, Mallory, black people don't become teachers. She said, why don't you be a secretary instead? So I looked at her and I said, I don't want to be a secretary. I want to be an English teacher. And she said, well, black people don't do that. And she said, I'm not giving you a reference for that. And, then, um, and, and she said, and besides, when she saw the look on my face, she said, besides, I don't think you're going to get your English A-level. And I remember looking at her and thinking, well, I'll show you, you old cow. <laughs> and, and if anything, it actually made me work harder. So I looked back at, I, and, you know, I, I went to Polly. She said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a reference to go to Polly to do business studies. And I knew it was a mistake before I got there, but I went. And halfway through the first time, I was rushed to hospital, had my appendix out, gave up my place, and um, I came because I had to come back down to London to recuperate. But by then, I had my A-level results. And I applied to Goldsmiths College, and I got in. And um, so I, now I quote that as an example of an experience in my life which made me stronger, though I didn't appreciate it at the time. In this life, you will come across plenty of people who will tell you that you can't. You can't because you're black. You can't because you're a woman. You can't because you're gay or disabled or whatever their excuse may be. But I'm here to tell you, you can. You can, you can, you can. <laughs> Don't let their excuse become yours. My experience with my careers teacher taught me that if someone gets in your way, you don't stand and waste your time arguing with them, nor do you on any account let them stop you in your tracks. What you do is find a way to go around them. So in the early 80s, when I knew I wanted to become an author, 
I heard from ver various quarters that it would never happen. Some of the reasons I, were given include, I was given included black people don't get published in this country, white children will never buy books that have a black child on the cover, black books don't sell, this is another of your ridiculous ideas, and you don't have what it takes to be a writer. At the time, I didn't know of any other contemporary black British children's writers, children's fiction writers. I knew of James Berry and Benjamin Zephaniah, John Agard, Grace Nichols, but they were poets. I hadn't come across the, the, some of the fiction works of some of them. As far as I knew, in the early 80s, there were no, uh, there were no contemporary black British no, no, novel writers. Plenty of African Americans, African and West Indian novel writers, but no black British ones. At least none that I had found, and believe me, it wasn't from the want of trying. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. It took me eight or nine books, two years, and 82 rejection letters before I had my first book accepted for publication. But once I made up my mind to be an author, nothing was going to stand in my way. My careers teacher had actually done me a favor in my early years by teaching me that when a door shuts, somewhere a window opens. You just have to look for it, recognize it, or if push comes to shove, you make one for yourself. For me, to try and to fail held no shame, as long as I knew I had tried my damnedest. But to be af too afraid to even try, that was the thing I knew I wouldn't be able to live with. My advice to all of you, whatever you do, what decide to do with your life, is do it with commitment and passion. Do it from the heart as well as the head, and don't take no for an answer. I congratulate all of you on your achievements. I am so proud of you. You are so inspiring. And my last piece of advice would be to get out into the world and make your mark and make it a good one. So that when you look back on your life, you will know that the world was and is a better place for your having been in it. Thank you. Thank you.